Okay, Fam Bulema, one good evening to everybody. Um, today, the 23rd of um, February, 2020. As usual on the then and now, I'm on a host and presenter, Prince Emil Koma, the come to owner this um, evening, this afternoon, this morning, wherever we watch this program from. Today, we take a slight um, away um, posture from we usual um, politics and want to talk about something very, very relevant. And this now, just a short broadcast I hope for do them in 30 minutes, not more than 45 minutes, but I sincerely hope for finish them under 30 minutes. But as usual, I ask for the um, ritual. The other we share the video wide and clear. Let me just go straight to the point because I say I want for be quick. As usual, on Sundays, we try for be quick because Monday is just about to down on us. Some people are not, then they can prepare the picking them for school. Some people and they can have um, dinner with the family or friends. But whatever the case, uh, crave una indulgence, a big una, they are gonna join we for just half an hour, 45 minutes, because this is important. As soon as I can see part the subject matter, I call on the importation of poverty. And the reason why I call this broadcast the importation of poverty, because it is real. The reason why people generally can move from one place to the other. The reason why people can become nomads, in other words, the movement of Ja people, if you will like, if I can quote Bob Marley, is because people then, they try for better themselves. So then leave one end to go to another with the hope um, of finding something better than what they've left behind, okay? They are aspirational people. But despite this, every time where they move, not everybody, but they find out, say, a vast majority of we people them. One, the minority, and for drag and down, you know, to um, one particular corner, that would be we community. So in other words, if we live in the Western world, it could be the minority group find themselves in difficult situations most of the time, if not all of the time, while the others who own the place, they do well. It not means they don't get poverty among them, but in terms of the, the numbers, exponentially, they are doing well, whilst um, people that look like me, minority people, black and brown people, are doing worse off. And um, like I said, we drag them down to young community back because inside some communities, 
they are doing well. Let's say the Asian communities, for example, are doing well. So it would be a good thing for let we do a study on that basis before find out why these communities are doing well. And probably some of the, the good things that they're doing, which um, they make the community they do well, we might as well um, take them good initiative then they and bring and come over to the community. So anyway, we ask, first of all, do we agree, say, we community not do too well? Do we agree, say, that we community most of the time they in trouble? And when I say not they do too well, when I say they in trouble, is for example, the title, importation of poverty. We come out on side with the hope of bettering ourselves, but only for come and find out that things are so difficult and it gets so extremely difficult for some for cope with the system. We either strange to them, we either by virtue of mistake before then they realize they are already um, on the floor, and um, therefore they find it very difficult for come from that point they from a point down to a point up, and the spiraling effect that this gets on families in which families are broken, families get broken as a consequence of um, these failures for move on from that of um, um, a poverty level for climb the ladder to at least somewhere, if not even at the top, but some in the middle. Remember poverty is defined as, you know, yeah, um, poor, when you're poor. And it's difficult for understand them when you didn't have them part of the world here for let you understand exactly how we pass in the, not a world so rich, a world so rich, whether in America, you did we get the biggest economy in the entire world, whether in the United Kingdom, you did we get the fifth largest economy, whether not generally in a Western Europe, you did, we did do fairly well, yet you are caught in a web of poverty. And like I say, poverty is defined as a state of being extremely poor. So you come out on side, and then you come to a country where you'd expect for do well, because first of all, I bring you can day, you're not just left thousands of miles away, cross oceans, you know, just for calm now. Another side where you know say go alien to you, but one thing drive you towards that point there, where now for escape from something which was intolerable, poverty, for calm some side with the hope of developing yourself and potentially your family, but only for calm. And then when you look, things not they go too well at all. So like I've been say, poverty as is defined is when you're extremely poor. How can you be extremely poor in a country which is very rich? Typical example, I'm in the United Kingdom, and yet, you know, um, I find people them who are extremely poor, extremely poor to the sense that Nakotia Putia, the same thing where you've been to do back home, that's what you're doing. You can't hit your home. <laughs> and I'm not making a joke out of this. I'm being very serious because the point of this broadcast is first of all, identifying the problem, see how we can come together by using like my own platform, for example, disseminating information to the people, what potentially can we do for move away from this, um, this culture of poverty because it has become a culture that so many people are falling below the ladder and what the consequence that they get on families as well. Typical example, you find out say, when people learn poor or they suffer in this kind of society where we live is telling on you picking them. You picking them get tempted because trust me, this is a capitalist society. Capitalist, capitalist society, some of the attributes of them, now the clothes where you wear, the clothes is very, very meaningful. The shoes where you wear, where you hear people and they talk about Nike trainers, Adidas, or fashion, fashion chain. This is hugely a component of the capitalist society. And if you cannot fit into this kind of fabric, it becomes extremely difficult for you, probably not especially for you because you have moved on as an adult, but you pick in the way you bring or where you born here, where they go along inside that society, the way they go to school and they go meet others inside them, all they kind of um, um, meet together and discuss issues where sometimes can alien to the culture where people um, left behind, inside them come up from, or waiting and can normally discuss when they meet in a social gathering, okay? It's completely different. And once you cannot afford for them picking any, or you find out, say, all you dip and do, now walk, 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 you dip and do, and then there, there becomes a disconnect between you and your picking or your family because a lot of us in Abado, you are actually probably the breadwinner. Even when your um, parents, I mean, like um, you got husband and wife, 
but to make ends meet, you two are always on the go. And then you leave the kids, the children, then you're gone. That space, that time, you don't know what happens in between. Gradually, you have become in, I mean, alienated to you picking them, okay? Alienated to you picking them. And don't think that space is not being occupied by others. Gradually, that picking day, they begin for lose um, attention. That picking day, they begin for lose motivation. Picking day, they begin to lose a sense of direction and then begin for fall down the ladder. And this is noticed at school because obviously at school, you're being tested. That's why you're there. You're supposed to be meeting, you know, your work set out for you and the rest of it. Your timely report cards, it's not up to scratch. So you just they fall below the ladder and attention pain becomes very, very difficult. And then before you, they look, you're so below, you can't cope. And then you are expelled from the, from the school, school expulsion. Learning from the statistics, as I get to know, should be worrying for every one of us. Fambulem, do you know that inside England alone, on a daily basis, 2,000 people, picking them, are expelled, not expelled, excluded from school on a daily basis. 2,000 school picking them. And their school picking and they are minority. The vast majority of them are black school children, which is me own picking them and you own picking them. These are the kind of picking them where largely are being excluded from schools. The idea that 2,000 picking them from Britain, I mean, um, mainland Britain, are being excluded from school on a daily basis is worrying. But it's even more worrying than when you look at other parts of the United Kingdom, other countries we make up this kingdom, i.e., be it Ireland or Scotland, do you know the number? Far, 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 far less. 165 picking them. Now, then, then they exclude from schools. Now, Scotland, Ireland, for an entire year, as compared to inside Britain, 2,000 school picking them. Now, another worrying thing for us is whether the conditions that are laid down for a picking for be excluded are met, because some of us can already go with the general idea, okay, that we picking them are troublesome, which I don't agree with. I'm talking about wholesale, because of course, every picking them troublesome. The interpretation of what troublesome is. How many of them are being troublesome? I do have a question mark about them, okay? But if you have that large number, this implies that something probably elsewhere is wrong. And if you want for nip the issue, not the board, as then go say, then you have to do a holistic study for study why so many are getting entrapped through that system, they're coming down where the school now get for exclude them picking there to a point where when they are excluded, a massive issue in this country where we are is the issue of a gang culture where picking them, when are we on picking them, black and brown are the, more, are the ones most caught up in that situation there. So can we ask whether the school responsible for part of the gang culture, this gang social culture where we see, because if you exclude the picking from school, the gang members, these idlers, these good for nothings are just out there waiting at that point because despondency sinks in, nothing for nothing or not, I mean, for let them do. Remember, I say, even we, the parents, are far away. Just to go walk. Even though a good thing you do for go walk, because you get for put food on the table, because you get for pay rent, and you get for, you know, take care of that picking day, because a one then thing they want to describe earlier on, the capitalistic or material world that we live in, and you get for filling that role. This is what it is called for, okay? And then, so therefore you continue for go walk. Even at that, the significance of your absence is so massive, is so relevant that there becomes a disconnect with you and you picking and picking them. And gradually, 
there is no culture of talking, confidence between you and them. And lily by lily, little by little, they are straying away from you. The bridge becomes wider and wider. And this is a wider societal um, um, sort of problem where we actually face now we country, to be honest. And something has to be done. And this is why I decided for do this broadcast today. But first of all, for alarm fumbling as to where we stand, because as I speak so tonight, the thousands of people we got for watch this video, a good sizable number of us will be having these kind of problems we really talk about. Because if you just imagine the percentage, I know they talk about America, I not talk about Germany, I not talk about Holland, mainland Europe, just Britain alone, 2000 minority school picking them have been excluded from school every day. Now you multiply that every day by five days a week and that five days a week by five weeks a month. And then I think 52 weeks and then you minus whatever the two days times um, 52 away from there and see what you're left with. And that is really, really a cause for alarm. So we look at another problem as to which thing really cause this. We know, of course, the issue of poverty, I call it the importation of poverty. We come out um, side them, USA we could not afford, we hope that USA will come, we can't afford. And then only for come, and then we find ourselves, you know, you're kind of caught up raising families. So man come, they say in the can look for only 20,000, 50,000, because USA you come out 20,000 pounds or dollars, goodness and mercy. That's so massive a money, say a business money you can look for, but you've not been taken into consideration. So you get for pay council tax, you get for pay OCN, you get for pay water bill, because how you come out, these things are things that way you can easily go around. So ignorance is one of the things that way they play into this. Now, even when you don't come on that side with that notion there, when you come back now, you don't know what are your advantages. Typical example, even the school exclusion, what would you talk about? Is the full process met? Are these students um, taken through the entire process before they are excluded? Or teachers, the authorities are just extremely happy at excluding um, students that don't look like one of theirs or just trigger happy for get rid of picking them. Because of course, to be fair to the teachers themselves, the pressure can be too much, but this not to no excuse say, therefore, the process of exclusion should not be exhausted because when you just exclude without proper scrutiny, without following the proper channel, without going through the review committee or what the documents say, and you think that you can take advantage of a people simply because they are ignorant, they don't know, and they accept it, then that in itself is uncalled for and the untold hardship whether they get for bear on a community of people is really, really bad, really, really bad. So Fambulem, the good news here is, we don't say we get people the way they help small, small, but like um, citizens advice be where they help massively people and we find themselves in this nature of things because of government cuts and the number of related cases we didn't get for deal with the backlogs and et cetera, they can only help you as much as they can, which is quickly make a reference, advice, and then you are on your own. And then you don't even know how to write the letter. Even if a letter, I mean, a template was to have been provided for you, you do not even know how to go about it. Not everybody has got the confidence to deal with those kind of stuff. Not everybody has got the ability for research. Not everybody will fall into trouble today means they are not useful in the society for the future. Not everybody will fall into trouble today, means say them bad. Sometimes, you know, yeah, such was the situation and they could have been wrongfully. I don't they listen to stories, don't they go around and they ask, they could have been wrongfully implicated. And once, you know, yeah, you fall into that category, day, it then becomes a massive problem in which it's just recurring because every time you're flagged up, this is it, you will be spoken to, and then the record gets um, getting created, created and created. And then you are deprived of some certain things in society. And then gradually, you no longer find yourself in mainstream. And then you are moving away from mainstream where the culture of gang is and where the gang masters are waiting for the recruitment process. 
Fambulem, there is um, uh, a society, an organization which has been developed, which is a charity organization is registered as a proper charity organization, even funding from the UK government. It's a Sierra Leonean organization, which is gearing towards helping in this particular regard. It's a group of young lawyers. It's a group of anthropologists. It's a group of young um, sociologists who understands these kind of problems that we are talking about. And because they are you and you are them, they take exceptional, exceptional care and duty of care to say, we have to help you. I'm quoting them in inverted commas all the way. So even when you get into council problems, social housing problems, the letter most likely that will be written to you, the way you will be treated, the way you will be spoken to is different from the way another will be spoken to and all because of ignorance. This is why we need to come together as a community. This is why what I said earlier on about other communities in the minority, the greater minority community, be it the Asian community, be it the Chinese community, they are doing well. Be it the Middle Eastern community, the Arab community, they are doing well, doing far better than us. And some of the reasons I've come to understand why they are doing better than us is because they understand the system. They know how to go around the system or work with the system and take the advantages that the system has got to provide for them. They know how to do it. And they've come together as a community, as cooperatives, because one thing that we need to understand in this society is once we come together as a community, like a house, you know, you're standing up in a unified fashion, there is much more for us to gain from it because as a community, the government of this country, of the United Kingdom, the United States, major Western nations recognize communities. So even if you were to have a platform, even if you were to have facilities, it's not as individuals, it's as communities. Something else that is plaguing our society, our community, the Sierra Leonean community, the Liberian community, the Guinean community, mostly the Sierra Leonean community, is a sense of um, it's a sense of deceit. It's a sense of um, falsehood of fakery. What you don't have, pretend that you have. Uh, I know there's a, um, um, a slang that came out recently in Freetown, which is called um, which they refer to as of a Porsche. And when I ask for the definition, it's something related to what I'm speaking about, that you don't have, but you are acting as if you have. And that does not bode well, okay? It does not bode well. Because as a community, Fambulem, we rise and fall together. The heartbeat of the community, did you hear me say, the heartbeat of the community is every one of us. That's why we rise together when we fall together. So pretending, does not really help. The problem has to be known. It's like you going to your doctor and speaking to your doctor. You have to be candid. You have to be open to your doctor. For your doctor, your doctor is not a magician. He or she doesn't know. If you are like Moriman, the Moriman, if you go to the Moriman, um, um, now you they go tell the Moriman what is your problem. Not if the Moriman they tell you what is your problem. Now you force the tell them. And the Moriman, then you psychology based on what you tell them, he begin for expand. Because of the issue and your psychology. I can't tell you about me fumbling and affect me. Then the more man asks you, oh, you get money, oh, you get good work, bam. It begins to expand on that. Now, because you get money, now because you get good work, somebody being come and I begin for talking the abstract. So you come to your doctor, you have to talk to your doctor. You have to tell your doctor what the problem is. So your doctor can fully understand exactly what the problem is, and the doctor can then deal with the issue because now the diagnosis is done there. And then he can then deal with the issue because he understand what in the issue is. It's the same thing that we community. We get for come together and identify what in now we problem. We get for come together and identify how we can go forward as a community. We get for understand what in are the advantages as to dealing with the authorities, with the local council, with the government, with we MPs, the advantages the way they inside, not as individuals, but as communities, because 
then go rather address communities. Imagine if we all begin go to with representatives, we council, with local authorities, with individual request, and then the great number of us that are involved. How can they deal with that? That's the simple logic. But rather, when we come together, we have a consensus as a family, as a group, as a community. It's so easier because then the message becomes powerful. Then the message becomes irrefutable. Then the message becomes irresistible. Then it's a matter of must that they have to listen. And this is how we win over things that are supposed to be ours as a community, whether in a community shop you go look for, whether in a community hall you go look for, whether in a playground for you picking them. When we come together as a community, we excel. Now, it make you go find other communities, then whether not the Spaniard community, the Portuguese community, other communities then away from us, they're doing well. And sometimes now we get for go sublet, sub rent from them. Whereas waiting and they do not so magical, we can do the same thing. But we need for begin for understand with weaknesses and with strength, and we need for begin for engage each other and talk. Confidence now the community need for begin for build up, and we too begin we need for begin for respect ourselves. That when people come and confide in you, you have to realize that some problems are just confidential. If person can't talk to you and can't talk to you now because there is trust and faith in you that you will be of some kind of help. And that if you can't help, not mean say you get for go take that information there and scatter around. We don't even belong to anybody. This not the help the community at all. It just doesn't help the community. What I do know from Bulen before I end, like I say in a short broadcast, is we get for realize for let we community become stronger or we nation become stronger or we continent become stronger. In fact, I want to speak to the nation, but always I don't say. Because now, till we get for develop on, I ask the question: Who stem Sigalion go host? You, you know something like um entrepreneurship. Are they talk about sober entrepreneurship? Today I try to avoid the issue of politics, but I know they talk about politics directly when I ask this question or questions we're about to ask or this latter development we want to make. The reason why they talk about them now because they are sacrosanct. They are a nexus, a direct nexus to the issues that we suffer, whether be it home or be it here. Because the places that also you derive your strength from, if you see some communities strong abroad, their peoples are respected. It's because where they come from is respected. Why are they respected? Because then they host them big, big seminar them, then strong entrepreneurship them. I don't go one or two conferences from them. And me, one of my friends just remind me, because I'm not beginning really to realize, I did see that, but it not occurred to me. But it just remind me, not knowing, most times when we go to these conferences, and I've been just to talk to one lady again today, we can host conferences with Pricewaterhouse and Coopers, hope for attend one of the conferences the way they plan soon. Most of the conferences there are, now, now other foreign um, nationals, other African nationals, we don't develop. So most times you go see Ghanaians, because the Ghanaian society is rising. So you will find out that the Ghanaian society or its people abroad are kind of respected. So if you're going to do like um, a, kind of, a kind of hierarchical you, you, you know, consideration in terms of rankings, you go put certain certain countries above while other countries then go there below. So in terms of what they talk about, the Ghanaian community is flying high. They're moving on. So it's the Nigerian community. If you go to East Africa, you go find the Ugandans and the, the Kenyans and the Rwandese. They are flying high. But then when it comes to us, you barely see us in these conferences, which are significant and serious because Nassau can bring development back home. Anytime where we set the bar, the bar almost can be so low, it's below the belt instead of above the head or even above the chest. That's better than below the belt. But this is how we set our bars. So I ask the question, now whose time we go begin for host them, be big entrepreneurship and innovation summit them? Whose time we go able for participate, you, you know, yeah, pan, then be big conference them? Uh, where are they ask about? Whose time we go take part from them international and regional? International and regional. Look, pull international force back. Sometimes we get for start, you know, yeah, from home and the near home. So the regional entrepreneurship. Whose time we go able for host business leaders them? And they talk about serious business leaders then. Not to them mafia business leaders then. 
how to then cut through them and they talk about where only they can exploit we, rape we country and see what they can take for themselves. And they talk about sober leaders, leaders that really think how to develop a country, how to take a country from uh, um, one level, a lower level to a higher level. Most then we go get digital organizations they can have a country or host them now a country because it's now a digital age. We go to make noise about other things than we material but of less uh, influence in terms of progress than then things that we would talk about. All ten are half half talk then now different. We then cyber machine them as soon as you critique your own nation where you belong to, and then they come at you as if there is no love for nation, as if people are idiots. But people are not idiots, the public is listening. And these are the relevant questions that we are asking. Who's then we go, host sober policy makers, then we go can help you for capitalize on, we exist in structure them and develop them so that it go better with people them. Who's then we go host leading academics from the region before the Canada the international community. It's not only about us, bringing others outside, trying to harness the views of others. When are we going to do this? When are we going to be able to talk to the diaspora then so that we can showcase the best the Alion get for offer? Who's them? Other than they have to talk them. I'm not talking about, you know, your petty talk because that's what we involve in. Because I'm involved in it or most of the time. I get caught up in it. I don't know. I don't know why, but it's because of, I, I believe it's because of um, my love for the community. So I do get caught up in it and thinking that you, you, you will have to make the argument and see maybe our views can re re resonate because we've got a right to think um, kind of differently. you go got a right to your opinion, so do I. It doesn't make either of us right, but if we talk sense and make references and develop theories and make them real, talk about policies, talk about what I'm talking about, then obviously we might see a light at the end of the tunnel. But the society is only getting smaller, getting uh, um, um, a lot of people getting marginalized and um, um, politics is taking the higher ground, identity politics is kind of right, extremism, partisanship, uh, uh, cronyism, autocracy is all on the rise. So therefore, all of this doesn't make sense. So this is why people like us fear for our country. Exactly. So I say, when are we going to invite sober policymakers? When are we going to invite uh, uh, academics Then we are recognized around the globe, around the continent? Yeah, around the region, West Africa, because we get many of them. Big time, you, you, you know, your yeah, academics. Nigeria alone get millions of them. When? And I mean, they talk about the diaspora and who's them will go able, uh, then show business they are all day and showcasing the best of Sierra Leone uh, um, and with businesses. Who's them? And they talk about bigger businesses where we don't graduate, where we go able for showcase shop there like, um, like Zainab. You, you know, yeah, on a different level, you know, yeah, rising a shop like um, um, how you call them, uh, uh, Hussein uh, uh, um, Hacks International, Hacks International, okay? Not just small time shops, there's nothing wrong with the small time shops, but after a while, we for yearn or desire for increase, we fold. Now, so we de expand because we get orders the way they kind of watch we. How we go able for unite Sierra Leoneans the way they na back home? And we will deny her. When the politics don't become so toxic and they become toxic every day. When you can't say anything about your country, as long as you know right with the other, you are branded as the other or branded as them, gradually becoming a them and us. Can you imagine that? How scary that is or this is? You don't agree with me, so you are them. I don't know what them is increasingly. I'm trying to begin to understand them. I mean, understand that. Them and us, that's DVC. When are we going to try to twin both, okay? And try to showcase all this with arts and entertainment and fashion and cultural events where we get. Not only there back home, but also in the diaspora. And not only amongst ourselves, we have to take the game to others. Go all ten out to we self no more. We have to aspire for take the game to others so others understand us. But there has to be unity. There is strength in unity, Pambulem. Okay. When are we going to try to create a strong and sufficient Sigalium? Uh, 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 when? These are critical questions that I ask. 
there is no greater tyranny fambulem than that which they separate uh, um, people them. There's no greater tyranny than that where they separate people them, where they operate under the shield of the law and they pretend for say they operate under the name of justice. Power fambulem, it means say, there should be a check um, or power supposed for that's what power is. If you allow yourself to get drunk by power, okay, you don't realize they, and they provide a check and balance system for the very power where you get, then this in itself is a problem. For let you be truly great, especially them politicians. If you want to endear yourself to the people, if we think about in terms of legacy, which are the wonder, the begin for wonder whether we politicians then can think in terms of legacy. Legacy, quite a big word, quite critical, quite significant. If we are thinking in this sense, then let me tell you, I've got a word of advice for you. For let you be a truly great leader, you have to stand with the people and not above them. Fambulem on this note, I want to end this broadcast here tonight. The next broadcast will be on the color red and green or green and red. Any discrimination between the two? Can you wear red around freely? Can you wear green around freely without being pointed at, without being looked at differently? That is coming up very, very soon. Keep watch. Please share this video and have a pleasant week. I've been your host and presenter, Prince Samuel Coleman. Good night.
Thank you very much for watching.